Good morning, Vietnam! What the definition of insanity is. I, I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. Remember, no Russian. Nobody puts baby. Hello beautiful people and welcome to the next year in the Real World series. A series where we take some of the old war shows such as Grammys, Oscars, and Video Game Awards and I give some of my opinions on who I think should have won in certain categories, while also sometimes commentating on some of the major controversies for said show. Today we'll be looking back at the 44th Grammys, taking place on February 27, 2002 at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. I shared my opinions on all of the year 2000 in my last three videos. But this year will be the start of the year 2001. Without further ado, let's dive into the Real Awards 2001. Best Rock Album And the nominees for Best Rock Album are Gold by Ryan Adam Just Push Play by Aerosmith Stories from the City, Stories from the Sea by PJ Harvey Hybrid Theory by Linkin Park All That You Can't Leave Behind by U2 And the winner is Hybrid Theory by Linkin Park Of course, of course U2 took this home with no surprise to absolutely anyone There were so many better albums that came out in the rock category that the fact that we got down to these five was kinda sad But one album here certainly stands out and that is Hybrid Theory by Linkin Park this album was one of the only albums here that showed the potential of 2000s and future rock, going a little harder than most rock had been going at the time. This isn't the most influential rock album or anything like that, but like I said, when I see this list and hear these albums, it does sound the most not 2001. PJ Harvey also deserved her nomination, and I could see her getting the award, but you too? Yes, I continue to be annoyed by this, and it won't stop here, as they just keep winning. As tired as you are going to get hearing me complain about you 2 is as tired as I am having them win. Best Rock Performance by a Duo with Vocals And the nominees are Jaded by Aerosmith Yellow by Coldplay The Space Between Dave Matthews Band Drops of Jupiter Train Elevation U2 and the winner is Jaded by Aerosmith. The original pick for the song continues to surprise no one. Yes, it was U2. As much as I hate on them, they really do write decent music. And this is definitely one that almost deserved to win its award, so I guess that's a plus. However, Aerosmith just edged them out for me with their sexually charged song, Jaded. Feeling like a psychedelic song from the 60s at times, I really fuck with the funk on this song. The guitar sounds so amazing, and the bass is funky as it gets. Then you have Steve Tyler's vocals on top, and for me this song is just a perfect combo of that sloppy rock that Aerosmith is known for, and it's my pick for the best rock performance by a duo or group. Best Pop Album with Vocals and The nominees are Whoa Nelly, Nelly Furtado All For You, Janet Jackson Songs from the West Coast, Elton John. Celebrity, In Sync. Lovers Rock by Sade. And the winner is Celebrity by In Sync. All right, this is definitely gonna be one of my first nostalgia picks for the series, but In Sync Celebrity was my childhood. Lovers Rock by Sade is the weakest of the five in my opinion, and I wouldn't have even argued this subject had Janet or Elton took this award but Celebrity takes it for me. When I was a kid in the early 2000s, my brother was a huge Backstreet Boys stan, but for me it was always in sync. I don't know what it was about them that drew me to them, but I distinctly remember having this CG and jamming the fuck out in my room on my bunk bed, acting like I was the one on stage performing these songs. My brother would then do the same with his Backstreet Boys CD, and we would take turns sharing the little stereo we had. It is a very cringe memory for me to look back on 
But when I listen to the CD again with a critical manner, it still does have some interesting things to say and some redeeming qualities. As far as the pop genre is concerned, I still greatly enjoyed it while trying to hold back as much bias as possible. Best Male Pop Vocal Performance and The nominees are Don't Let Me Be Lonely Tonight by James Taylor Fill Me In by Craig David You Rock My World by Michael Jackson I Want Love by Elton John Still by Brian McKnight And the winner is You Rock My World by Michael Jackson James Taylor does sound absolutely amazing, and Don't Let Me Be Lonely Tonight. And I understand why the Academy picked this song, but Michael Jackson's You Rock My World just had way more energy in both the performance and the writing. Michael Jackson's iconic for a reason, and this song is so iconic too, with the Chris Tucker Michael Jackson monologue at the beginning being super fun to look back on. And then you have this amazing piano startup, and you throw Michael's outstanding vocals on top, and it's the best song out of the bunch by far. Record of the Year. And the nominees are Walk On by U2, Video by Indiari, Fallen, Alicia Keys, Miss Jackson by Outcast, Drops of Jupiter by Train. And the winner is Fallen by Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys came out on fire and completely took over every radio station and record store at the time. Fallen is a huge reason why, and it's 1000% a better record than Walk On, which was the pick for the Academy. Walk On was an important song to you too, and its political and just general meaning was great, but the production was nowhere near what Fallen was, and vocally Alicia was almost untouchable in the year 2001. Miss Jackson was of course super close to taking this from me. But when listening to Fallen in comparison, I just couldn't see how anyone but Alicia took this award home. She was certainly robbed by the Academy's blindness to all things U2. Best Female Pop Vocal Performance and The nominees are I'm Like a Bird, Nelly Furtado There You'll Be, Faith Hill Someone to Call My Lover by Janet Jackson. By Your Side, Save. Essence by Lucinda Williams. And the winner is There You'll Be by Faith Hill. So I'm not gonna lie, I really do enjoy I'm Like a Bird by Nelly Furtado. It's one of my guilty pleasures, and it's iconic for sure. Much more iconic than Faith Hill's There You'll Be. But vocally, Faith Hill utterly destroys here. As I've referenced in my past Real Award videos, Faith Hill's vocals are really hard to touch and need almost no coverage when it comes to the audio mixing. It is obvious that Nelly isn't doing much with her vocals at all. This is obvious by the fact that the music is the same volume level as her actual vocals. And then in the chorus, you have this like three layers of her voice layered on top of itself rather than having actual background singers. This all seems way too on the nose to not be the producer trying to hide what her vocals are doing here. And it's just hard to not hear it once you notice it. Iconic for sure, but Faith Hill takes yet another award for me in the vocal department. Album of the Year. And the nominees are Oh Brother Where Art Thou Original Movie Soundtrack by Various Artists, Acoustic Soul by Indy Ari, Love and Theft by Bob Dylan, Stanconia by Outkast. All That You Can't Leave Behind by U2. And the winner is Stanconia by Outkast. How could they have possibly snubbed Outkast here? This was the clear and most obvious snub of the whole year. I'm not downplaying how great of a soundtrack Oh Brother Where Art Thou has, as if you've seen my Real Awards video on the 2000 Academy Awards, you would know I really enjoy this movie. And the music is absolutely fantastic, coming from a person who doesn't really listen to this type of music at all. But come on, Stanconia was an instant classic, the second it dropped, and that had to be the feeling of everyone else at the time. I will at least give slight points to the Grammys for not throwing this award at U2, but snubbing Outkast to do it just isn't worth it. I think everyone today who takes a good look back at this year knows Stanconia was the album of the year for 2001. I only had 7 changes to make for the 2001 Grammys, 
with most of them being focused on the big four and the pop categories. They did seem to get rap and R&B pretty correct here this year. There were a few minor additions to the categories this year, so I'll go over those really quickly. This year would see two categories added, those being Best Short Form Music Video and then Best Rap Song Collaboration was also added to recognize artists who do not normally perform together. Eve, featuring Gwen Stefani, won this award for Let Me Blow Your Mind. Its categories start getting added more and more, and the names also begin to change as we go further on. And sometimes that becomes a controversy in itself. Thank you all again for watching, and if you want to hear the numbers real quick before you go, I'll go over them. There was ultimately over 60 hours of music to listen to a few times through, 6 hours of editing, and ultimately 7 changes were made.